If you'd like to follow along with the written version of this pattern, use the link on screen now in the description below or by going to clubcrochet.com slash T-Rex. Hey there, it's Louis, and in this video I'm going to be showing you how to crochet a little tiny T-Rex. Isn't he just adorable? So really quick before I get going, if you end up liking this pattern, uh, and you want more dinosaur patterns like it, I have a whole bunch of dino patterns uh, that you can find at clubcrochet.com slash dino. Not only will you find the written version for this pattern there, but you'll also find a upgraded version that teaches you how to make spikes and a belly, as well as other dinosaur patterns like this stegosaurus, a brontosaurus, and a little triceratops, which you might have seen before. All right. Well, let's get these guys out of the way and talk about this dino pattern first. In this pattern, I'm using the following materials. Normally, I'd be saying that I'm using 100% cotton, but because this pattern is pretty difficult, uh, I am going to be using a slightly larger yarn. Uh, I guess it's technically medium weight. It's um, this acrylic medium weight yarn. And the reason I'm using this yarn is because this pattern is somewhat difficult. Um, I would say it's... Uh, close to hard and the reason I would say that is because of these legs and uh, like there's just a lot of techniques that are a little bit further advanced like these arms and the way that you make the lip and the nose and stuff like that I'm not saying it's impossible I'm just saying don't start with this pattern if you're just starting with amigurumi I would suggest starting with this triceratops pattern which is also a free pattern that you can find at clubcrochet.com slash triceratops a lot of the techniques that I use in this pattern, I'm using in uh, in the T-Rex pattern uh, a little bit further advanced. So like bobble stitches and stuff like that. So there's my little disclaimer. Try not to do this one as your first amigurumi pattern because it will probably frustrate you. That being said, it is definitely doable. You just need to take it nice and slow, which is what we're going to be doing in this video. We're going to be going step by step, stitch by stitch, and going a little slower so that it's a little bit easier for you. Okay, so for this pattern, I'm using the following materials. Let's get back to that. I'm using all medium weight yarn in, uh, I believe it's 100% acrylic. Um, uh, I believe I'm using Vanna's Choice if you're looking for a specific yarn. Normally, I like using 100% cotton, like Lily Sugar and Cream or Lion Brand Cotton yarn. But uh, I find that in this video, it might be a little bit difficult to see what the stitches, what's happening with the stitches. So I'm using acrylic yarn for this. I'm also using a size G four millimeter crochet hook. You'll need a couple of safety bead eyes. Um, you can also use bullion knots in replace for that for the eyes. And you'll need just two colors, um, the main color and a little bit of white for the teeth. You also will need some stuffing, a pair of scissors and a darning needle. I would suggest using a crimped end darning needle like this. Uh, it'll help you get in and out of the stitches. As I get going in this, if you end up crocheting this pattern, please send me a photo. Uh, I'm very curious to see how many people end up crocheting this. So post a photo on Instagram with hashtag club crochet and I can see it there. Or you can send it to me uh, in the Facebook group, which I'll link in the description below as well. Um, but yeah, I'd love to see if you end up uh, finishing this pattern, who finishes it, because it is a pretty tough one. And really quick, one more thing before I get going. I know I'm I'm rattling on now, but check out this little top hat version of the dinosaur that I made with a bow tie. Isn't it cute? I have this top hat version available as well. Okay, well, let's get hooking. Uh, we're actually going to start with our white yarn for the teeth. So for the teeth, we're going to start with a uh, slip knot. So we're going to flip the yarn over on itself like this and then flip that loop over itself to make kind of look like a pretzel there, and then pull the inside of the pretzel to make a slip knot, just like that. Okay, we're gonna take a crochet hook and get that in there, just like that. And to start our teeth, we are going to chain three. So we're gonna yarn over and chain three. One, two, and three. Now you wanna pull this a little bit tighter. That'll make it into a little spike at the end. And you wanna turn this around. Let me get a little closer to the camera here. And you wanna work into the back loops of the chain, right there, just like that. 
A lot of this pattern is worked into the back loops of the, of the chain, so make sure to do that. Okay, so once you're into the back loop, we're going to do a single crochet, like so. Pretty easy, see how it makes a little point? And then we're just going to chain one, and we'll cut the yarn. You don't need too long of an end, that's probably just fine. And we can just pull it all the way through. You wanna make two of these, at least two of them, but you could probably do a little bit more if you want your dinosaur to have like four teeth or, I would, con I would keep it even, but you can make more teeth if you'd like to. Next up is the tail, and we'll be using our main color for the tail. We're going to be using a magic loop method for this, and for the magic loop, I'm going to wrap the yarn three times around my index finger, one, two, and three, and we're going to take the end here and place it in between your middle and ring finger, and then you'll pull your fingers in like a little finger gun. Take your crochet hook and place it under the first two loops on your finger, and then grab that last one and pull that under the first two loops. Now yarn over with the same yarn that you just pulled through, like so, and then yarn over and pull that through the loop you made. That's going to create a chain, which you can then pull off of your finger. Okay, and now uh, we have a little magic loop here. Okay, so for round one of the tail, we're going to be single crocheting three times into the magic loop. So right here, we're just single crochet three times. One, two, and three. Okay, pretty easy. Now we'll close this magic loop up. I like to pull the tail end, which will pull in one of these two loops. Okay, so it pulled this loop in. Now you can grab the loop that it pulled in and pull that loop down like so, which will tighten the second loop. And then you can pull the tail end, which will tighten the first loop. And there you go. That is how you do a magic loop. Okay, so that's the end of round one. For round two, we'll be working into the back loops only for just the first stitch. So I like to pull my loop out like this. It gives me more mobility with my crochet hook. And we'll be going around and finding the first single crochet we made, which was right here. And we're going to be working into the back loop only, meaning this loop right there. If I worked under both of them, it would look like that, but I'm only getting under this one. Okay, so get our crochet hook under that loop. And now when you're in that loop, you can pull your first loop a little tighter. And we're going to do an increase into that loop. So we're gonna do two single crochets. So there's one, and go into the same back loop right here. And two, okay, so that's gonna be an increase. And then for the rest of this round, we'll be doing a single crochet into the following two stitches and we're going to be working into both loops now so we'll go under both of them and we'll do a single crochet into the next two so there's one and two okay and that's going to be the end of round two you can see this is just going to be the end of the tail here okay now we're on round three for round three, we'll be doing a single crochet into the first stitch. I'm gonna loosen my loop up to give me more mobility and get into this first one. And we'll be working into both loops now for the rest of the tail here. We'll do a single crochet into the first stitch right here. And then an increase into the next stitch right there. And we'll do that one more time. We'll do another single crochet into the next stitch. And then an increase into the next one. And that should bring you up to six stitches around. So if you'd like to count now, you should have six stitches around in the circle. Okay. For round four, we're going to be single crocheting into each stitch all the way around. So just going into both loops all the way around doing a single crochet. And there should be six single crochets total. So it's one, two, three, four, five, 
and here is six. Okay, that's gonna be the end of round four. For round five, we'll be doing a single crochet into the next to the first two stitches. So that's one and two, and then we'll do an increase into the next one right here. three and four. And now we'll repeat that one more time. So we'll do two more single crochets. One, two, and then another increase. Three and four. Okay, now you should have eight stitches around if you'd like to count. Okay, so for round six, we'll be doing a single crochet into each stitch around. Just one single crochet into each stitch. And again, there should be eight stitches around. So that means we'll be doing eight single crochets. Two, three, four, five, six, seven, and eight. There we go. And that'll be the end of our rounds for tail. Okay, so now we can, uh, to finish the tail up, we'll just slip stitch one, just like that. And then we'll just cut the yarn. You wanna leave long enough end here so that you can sew it onto the body. That's probably just enough. And then we'll just pull that all the way through. And we'll put this to the side with our teeth and we'll come back to it um, pretty much close to the end of the pattern. And now we can get started on the body. So for the body, we're using our main color again. And we're going to start with a slip knot, just like the teeth. And we're going to chain four. One, two, three, and four. We'll skip our first chain that we made and then we'll start into the next one right here and we'll single crochet into the next two chains. So one and two. Now into the third chain, we're going to single crochet three times into that one chain. Okay, so three single crochets into that third chain. One, two, and three. Three. And you'll see that naturally it's going to turn itself around as you're crocheting into that same stitch. It's just going to kind of like spin itself around, which is perfect. Because next we're going to turn our piece 180 degrees and working into the bottom of the chains, we're going to single crochet one to the first and then three into the next. Okay, so here's where we just made our three increases. Let me get the needle right here. We just worked into this stitch. Next, we we're going to work into right here, the next chain over. Right there. And we're going to single crochet one to that one. And then into the last chain right here. You might need your nail to get in that. We're going to single crochet three times into that stitch. So there's one, two, and three. Okay, and at the end of this uh, round, we should have nine stitches. So let's go ahead and count them just so you can see. We've got one right here, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. Nine stitches. Okay, that'll be the end of round one. For round two, we're going to skip our first stitch right there. We're going to start into that one. So skip that stitch, start into this stitch, and we're going to do a single crochet into the first stitch. that and then we're going to increase into the next three stitches so starting right here we're going to increase three one two there's our first increase one two there's our second one two there's our third okay so single crochet one three increases Next, you will do, uh, we'll do another single crochet into the next stitch. 
And then we're going to do that one more time. We're going to increase three more times. So let's do three increases. One increase. Two increases. And three increases. There we go. And at the end of round two here, we should have 14 stitches around. Okay. So now we're on to round three. For round three, we'll do a single crochet into our first stitch right here. And then we'll do a repeat. We're going to do a repeat of one single crochet and then an increase. And we'll repeat that three times. So a single crochet and then an increase three times in a row. So let's do a single crochet and then an increase. Another single crochet and then an increase. And that will be our three repeats. We're going to do that again in just a second. Next, we'll do a single crochet. And now we'll do our repeats three more times. So a repeat is a single crochet and then an increase. And repeat that three times. A single crochet and then an increase. One more, single crochet, get some extra yarn, and then our final increase right here. Okay, and that will be the end of round three. Before we continue, let's get some uh, extra yarn that we can use as a stitch marker. This should work just fine, just so we can keep track of where we're at. Okay, so we're on round four. For round four, we're going to do five single crochets. We're going to work around our stitch marker for the first one. There's one, two, three, four, five, and then an increase. Okay, five single crochets and then an increase, and then we'll do a single crochet and then another increase. And we'll finish up by doing a single crochet in the remaining 12 stitches. One, two, three. And this should bring you up to 22 stitches around. Four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, 10, 11, and here is our 12th. Now before I continue, I'm going to cut the tail end of the beginning green yarn. Just throw that to the side, we don't need it. And we'll pull our stitch marker up, and that will be the end of round four. For round five, we're going to start by doing six single crochets. One, two, three, four, five, and six. And then we're going to make a nostril. For our nostril, instead of working into this stitch, into our next stitch, we're going to work into the round above it, which is going to be right here where your increases are meeting. We're going to be working into that loop. And we're going to do a double crochet into that loop. So for that, we're going to yarn over, and go into the loop under right here, or into the stitch under. Okay, let me show you with a needle actually. Right there, that's where we want to work into. Like that, yarn over and pull through, yarn over and pull through two, and then yarn over and pull through the final two. Double crochet into the round above. Now we're going to skip the stitch that we worked over. You can kind of see it just barely under there. And we're going to single crochet into the next two stitches. One and two. And now we'll make our second nostril, which again is into the increase. You can see the two Vs going into the, to the same stitch right there. We'll do a double crochet into that stitch. 
yarn over, into that, yarn over and pull through, yarn over, pull through two, yarn over, pull through two. Okay, and we'll skip the stitch that it is um, worked over. You can kind of barely see it right there. And we'll begin single crocheting into the remaining uh, 12 stitches. One, two, three, four, five, six, and seven, eight, and a nine, ten, get a little bit extra yarn, eleven, and here's our final stitch right here, will be twelve. You can see how our little dino head is coming together. You can see the little nostrils there. They're just, they're subtle, but they're there. They're a lot less subtle in a uh, cotton yarn. You can kind of see them a little bit easier when you're using cotton yarn. Okay. So now for round six, we'll be making our upper lip. To do that, we're going to pull our stitch marker over like that. And we're going to start by doing three single crochets. One, two, and three. And now we'll be working into the front loops only, meaning this loop right here, instead of working into both loops like that, we'll only be working into this front loop. And we're going to do 11 single crochets working only in this front loop. Go to that first front loop and do 11 single crochets. We'll do one, two, three, and four, five, six, seven, and an eight, nine, ten, and 11. There you go. So 11 stitches working only in the front loop. And then we'll be working into both loops for the remaining eight stitches. So do eight single crochets. One, two, working into both loops. Three, four, five, six, seven, and eight. Do I sound like Sean Connery? <laughs> All right, so that's gonna be the end of round six. Again, you should still have 22 stitches around. Okay, now we're on to round seven. For round seven, we're gonna pull our stitch marker over and we'll start by doing three single crochets, just like the last round, working into both loops. One, two, and three. And then next, we're gonna be working into the back loops from round five, the round previous uh, to the round before. So if you actually flip this lip under, you'll see the back loops right there. And we're going to work into these back loops. Now, it can be kind of hard to tell which one is the first one. So the way that I've found is best is this would be the next stitch, right? So what I do is I go right behind that stitch with the needle and it should end up into the back loop. Oopsies, let's try a different needle. Into the back loop right here. Okay, so that's gonna be the first stitch that we're gonna work into. And we're gonna do, we're gonna be working into only these back loops for the next, um, I believe it's one, two, three, four, five, seven stitches. Okay, so just working into this back loop. Okay, so we're gonna start with just a single crochet into the first one right here. And then we're going to work a decrease. Now, I don't mean a single crochet two together or an invisible decrease, a sharp decrease. For a sharp decrease, what we'll do is we'll go into the next stitch and pull a loop through like we're doing a single crochet. Next, we'll go into the next next stitch right here, pull a second loop through, and pull that second loop through the two on the hook. I call this a sharp decrease because it really pulls it in really, really tightly. It's very noticeable, but it pulls it in really tightly, which is exactly what we want in this case, because you won't see it because it's under the top lip. So we're going to do two of those sharp decreases. So there's one. And. Two. Okay. And then we'll do a single crochet into the next. And then two more of those sharp decreases. Get that lip up. 
and we're gonna go into the next loop, pull a loop through, into the next next loop right here, pull a second loop through, and pull the second loop through the two on the hook. Okay, and one more of those. Loop, loop, and then pull that second one through. And then to finish up in these back loops, we're going to do one more single crochet right here. Okay, and that's going to be um, how you do that. And next we can work back into both loops of the following stitches. The next stitch is right here. If you follow uh, this back loop, you'll see that this stitch is the same, the same one. So we wanna work into this next one right here. And we're going to just single crochet into the following um, eight stitches. One, two, and we're working into both loops. Three, four, five, six, seven, and eight. There you go. And that's going to be the end of round seven. Okay. So for round eight and nine, we're going to just be single crocheting into each stitch around, and we're going to be working into the same stitches that uh, you just made, not into this upper lip part, but into these stitches right here. We're just going to do single crochets for the next two rounds. That's two rounds, and you should have 18 stitches around. So we'll be doing 18 stitches for two rounds in a row. That's rounds eight and nine. So let's start with our first round here. One, two... And we'll just keep going around, and there should be 18 stitches. You can see how we're working into, whoop, lost our stitch there. There we go. We'll just keep working into those both loops. This is actually the second time I'm recording this video uh, in a row, um, because I did a another video of how to crochet the T-Rex, but I included all the color changes and the, sp and the spines and stuff like that. Um, that's the other version of the pattern. I would say that's like the um, advanced version of this pattern. So you can add, you know, a belly and the spikes and stuff like that. That's available for Club Crochet members. So if you want to uh, figure out how to make that belly and the spines, as well as get the rest of the dinosaur patterns, make sure to go to clubcrochet.com slash dino. Um, I spend a lot of extra time making a video for every single tutorial on that site. And if you actually become a Club Crochet member, not only do you get access to patterns just like that, but you get access to all of my patterns on the website. That is, I think we're over 100 patterns now. I think there's like 110 or something. There's a lot. A lot of patterns and tutorials, um, uh, exclusive amigurumi tutorials, things like that. And it only costs $5 a month for a membership, uh, and you actually can do a free trial. So if you'd like to try it out, there's a free trial available as well. And you can do that just by going to clubcrochet.com and creating an account. You can also create a free account to get um, access to this written pattern, things like that. Okay, so this is going to be, I believe, yeah, this is going to be the end of round nine right there. Okay. So now you can see how our face is coming together. Our little stitch marker is in the way a little bit. Now we're going to add the teeth and the eyes. So first let's start by adding our teeth. So we're going to pull this loop out. I'm going to grab the needle that fell on the ground. And we're going to start by grabbing our teeth. And if you look, there is a curve to the teeth. There's just a very subtle curve where this would be the outside and this would be the inside of the curve. Okay, if I turn it around, you'll see it goes the other way around. So you want the curve to be facing out, meaning that you want the curve like that. So this is the outside of the curve. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna thread this on our needle, the outside of the curve. And we're going to go under the last stitch in the lip, upper lip, right there. So under that loop and go into the body. Pull it into the body. And we're going to thread the other end of the tooth. And we can flip the lip up a little bit. I'm a dino dentist. And we're going to 
go into the stitch just to uh, just one stitch over towards the middle of the face, so right like there. And on the inside, you want to pull it tight enough so that the knots of the teeth, of the ends of the teeth there, get pulled in. You can see how they're just pulled those knots right in there. And then we'll just double knot that on the inside. One. And two. And cut the yarn. Just like that. Okay, so you can see it just barely poking out under the lip. If you want it a little bit further out, just grab it with your needle. Just kind of pull it out just a little bit. There we go. It's like a vampire, uh, vampire T-Rex. All right, so let's do the same thing on the other end. So you can see the curve is on the outside here. That's the one you want to thread first. And we're going to do the same thing on the opposite side. We'll go up through the last stitch, just like that. And then make sure it goes in. Pull that loop through. And then we can thread the other end. Flip that lip up a little bit and go into the next stitch over, which would be right there. Okay. And we're just going to pull those knots, pull the teeth hard enough so that those knots just barely poke through. Try not to pull too tight or it will, um, you might pull the actual full tooth through. But there you go. See those little knots sticking out? And we'll just double knot that on the inside. One. And two. And then we can cut the ends. Throw that to the side. Okay, so we got our two little, our teeths. We got our tooths. One and two. Okay, so next we want to add the eyes. Now, normally, I do six millimeter eyes. Um, but this guy's just well. Let's see. Is he? Yeah, he's just going to be just a little bit bigger. Let's see if. Let's see what it looks like if we use slightly larger eyes. So I have this bunch of eyes here. So let's try these ones. I believe those are eight millimeter eyes. And if they don't work, we'll try those six millimeter eyes as well. And we want to get the locking mechanisms too. We're just going to need two of those. Okay, so first I'm gonna clean off this eye. As you can see, it's got some a little bit extra plastic on it. So we're just gonna get that off. Okay, so let's try the big eye first. And the eyes go, remember where we came out with the needle in the top lip right there? That's where the eyes are gonna go. We're, they're gonna go on either side of the, of the edge of the little lip. So we're gonna start work right there. Let's try the big one first. Uh, the big one's okay. I'll tell you what, let's try the little one on the other side. And the little one is going to go right there. Well, I think the little one actually still looks cuter. The big one kind of looks creepy. Let's, let's stick with the little ones then. Right like that. So those are six millimeter eyes that we're going to be using. Okay. So they just go on either side of the lip on the last stitch over. And we can just use the little locking mechanism on the inside. We'll just push that in to tighten it. Let's do it on the other side. And just push it in to tighten it. And there we go. That's how we add the face. Okay, you can kind of see the nostrils there. Okay, so next up, we'll be starting on the body, or continuing on the body, I should say. Let's get our yarn, and we should pull over our stitch marker to keep track of where we're at. And we're going to start with four single crochets. We are on round 10, if you're following along in the written pattern. So we're going to single crochet four times. One two, three, and four. 
And then next we'll be doing an arm. For the arm, we're going to chain three, one, two, and three. We're gonna skip two of those chains and we're gonna work into the back loop of the third chain from the hook or the first chain that you made. And we're going to slip stitch one. There we go. Okay. Now we're going to chain two, one, and two. We're going to pull it a little tighter, and we're going to work into the same place that we worked into for that last slip stitch, and we're going to do another slip stitch. That's going to create these little, these two little, like, fingers. Okay, and that's going to be how we're going to do an arm. We'll do that again in just a second, um, but in between arms, we want to do seven single crochets. So we'll do seven single crochets now. One, two, three, four, five, six, and seven. And then we'll do another arm. Again, that's chain three. One, two, and three. I like pulling that a little tighter. Then we're going to work into the back loop of the first chain that we made. So right here. It's easiest, I find, to use your nail to get that back loop over the crochet hook, like so. And we'll just slip stitch into that one. And then you can chain two. One and two. Pull that a little tighter. Work into that same loop that you just worked into. And do another slip stitch. To make your little hands. And then to finish this up, we'll be doing seven more single crochets until the end of the round. So we'll just do seven more. One, two, three, four, five, six, and seven. That'll be the end of that round. You can see his little tiny arms. They're so cute. Okay, this guy's coming together. He's looking pretty cute. Okay, so that's the end of round 10. For round 11, we're gonna pull our stitch marker up. Wipe our, wipe our place clean here. And we're just going to do a single crochet into each stitch around, but we're gonna be working um, around these arms, making sure that the arms are facing the outside. So we'll just do a single crochet into each stitch all the way around. And when we get to the arms, so here is our fourth single crochet. Now we're at our first arm. I like to pull the loop out, make sure the arm's on the outside, and work into the stitch right after the arm, right there. Pull loop through. And then once I'm, I've got it, um, both loops on the hook and outside of the, or and inside of the arm, I pull it tighter and then finish the single crochet to make sure that that arm is on the outside. We'll just keep doing those single crochets. Easy squeezy lemon peasy. Okay. Here's the next one. Pull the loop out. Get that arm on the outside. And there we go. So you can see how those arms kind of just stick on the outside. And they're so easy to make. My favorite part about this pattern um, is that it takes a very small amount of sewing together. You have to sew the teeth on, obviously, and you'll have to sew the tail on in the end. But other than that, it is all worked into one piece, so you don't have to sew things together. That's my least favorite part about making amigurumi. Okay, so that's the end of round 11. Um, there should be 18 stitches around, by the way. For round 12 and 13, that's two rounds in a row, 12 and 13, we're going to be doing a single crochet into each stitch around. So easy as pie. We're just going to be doing a single crochet all the way around. Let's get that yarn there. 
And as I continue here, if you like this video, please like it down below. Uh, it really helps out the channel. And if this video gets enough likes, I'll keep doing making uh, more dinosaur patterns. I have a raptor pattern um, that I'm working on, but I'm not sure if it's worth putting all the effort into. If this video gets a lot of likes, uh, it might it might help influence <laughs> my decision to make a raptor. Um, and also, of course, subscribe if you're not subscribed already. Uh, and make sure to hit the little bell icon, which will notify you when I come out with new videos uh, and new patterns and tutorials, things like that. Okay, there's our first round done. And keep working around there. And again, if you have, if you end up finishing this stit, uh, this pattern, please let me know. I I'm really, really curious to see how many people do it because. This is this pattern is a lot like the skull pattern of mine. I don't know if you know about that, but I have a pattern for how to crochet a little tiny skull, and it's one of the most difficult patterns I've come out with. But it is so cool, and and this pattern is very similar in my heart. Um, it's a very difficult pattern, I find, but it is really neat. I, I'm really proud of this pattern. Okay. So there's the end of there's the end of round 13. Okay, so now we're on round 14, which is the most difficult part of this pattern. Um it is significantly uh these legs are tough, but I think they're worth it cuz you don't have to sew anything on. <laughs> so, for the legs, we're going to start by pulling this stitch uh the stitch marker over a little bit. And we're going to start by doing four single crochets before we get to our first leg. One, two, three, and four. Okay, so here comes our first leg. Now we're just gonna take this one stitch at a time, or one step at a time. There's um, a few steps to it. And if you're following along in the written pattern, it might be a little bit easier to tell. Okay, so we're gonna start by yarning over and inserting into the stitch from the round above. Okay, so not this stitch right here, but the stitch above right here. Okay, same thing as the nose, the nostril, working into the round above that. Okay, and now we want to yarn over again and pull a loop through, then yarn over and pull through two loops on the hook. Okay, that's not that tough, right? So now we're going to do that again. For step two, repeat step one. So let's yarn over, go into the round above, yarn over and pull through, then yarn over and pull through two. And I find keeping a good tension here, keeping a lot of tightness, uh, will keep this stitch nice and nice and tight. <laughs> nice and tight. Okay, so that's the end of step two. For step three, with the loops still on the hook, we're going to chain two, one, and two, and into the back loop of the first chain that we made, we want to slip stitch one. So we're gonna turn that stitch over, get our uh, crochet hook into that back loop, and we're gonna slip stitch into that. Okay, and that's the end of step three. Okay, so for step four, we're gonna repeat steps one through three. <laughs> so let's start with step one. We're gonna yarn over, go into the stitch from around above, yarn over and pull through, then yarn over and pull through two. Okay, step two, we're gonna repeat that one more time. Yarn over, go into the stitch from the round above, yarn over, pull through, yarn over and pull through two. And step three, we chain two, one, and two, and into the first stitch, the first chain that we made, working into the back loop of it, right here, we want to slip stitch one. Like that. Okay, that's going to be the end of step four. And for step five, we want to repeat step one. So we're going to yarn over, go into the stitch from the loop above, yarn over, pull through, yarn over, and pull through two. Oh no, 
don't lose it. Let's try that step again, because you do not want to lose the stitches that are on the hook. Let's try that again. Into the loop, yarn over, pull through, yarn over, pull through two. So there's one and two. Okay, now there should be six loops on the hook, so let's count them. One, two, three, four, five, six. And for our final step in the legs, we're going to yarn over and pull through all the loops on the hook. Okay, so this is a stitch I made up just for this just for this pattern. But you can see it makes these two little nubs on the end of like a really big bobble stitch. I don't know what to call this stitch. If you have any ideas for a name, let me know. Okay, so that's one of the legs done. So now we want to single crochet six times and then till we come to our next leg. So here's our next stitch. You can kind of see it right, right there. There we go. And we'll single crochet six. So there's one, two, three, oops, four, five, and six. There we go. And now we're gonna do another leg. And I'll go this I'll do this one a little bit quicker, but it's the exact same um it's the exact same pattern. So we're gonna start with step one, yarn over into the stitch from the round above, so not right here, but right here. Yarn over and pull through, and then yarn over and pull through two. Then we're gonna repeat that, yarn over into the stitch, yarn over and pull through yarn over, and pull through two. Next, we'll do our chain two. This is gonna be step three. One, and two, there we go. Into the back loop of the first chain that we made right here, we want to slip stitch one. Okay, now we wanna repeat that process one more time. So we're gonna yarn over into the loop above, yarn over, pull through, Yarn over and pull through two. Then do it again. Yarn over into the stitch from the round above. Yarn over and pull through. Yarn over, pull through two. And now we're going to do that little chain two thing again. So yarn over and chain two. One and two. Pull a little tighter. Find the back loop of that first chain that we made right here. And slip stitch one. There we go. And finally, we yarn over and do that step one one more time. Go to the stitch from the round above, yarn over and pull through, yarn over and pull through two. Now there should be six loops on the hook. One, two, three, four, five, six. We finish up by yarning over and pulling through all the loops on the hook. Like that. Make sure that you pinch the little two toes Make sure they're on the outside like that. Okay. To finish up round 14, we want to single crochet into the remaining six stitches. So here's our first one right here. It's almost covered up by the foot. And we do one, two, three, four, five, and six. Let's take a second and really look at those toes. Look at that. Okay, so the hardest part is done. If you if you made it past that, you are cruising. That is that is um, the hardest, most difficult part of this pattern. Okay. That's the end of round 14. For round 15, we're going to pull our stitch marker over. And we're going to do a single crochet into the first stitch right here. and then a sharp decrease. Remember the sharp decrease from under the lip? We're gonna do that again. So we're gonna go into the next stitch, pull a loop through, into the next next stitch right here, pull a second loop through, and pull that second loop through the two on the hook. And we'll repeat that process six times total. So let's do it again. We single crochet one, and then we do a sharp decrease. Into the next stitch, pull a loop through, into the next next stitch, pull a second loop through, pull that second one, through the two on the hook. Okay, there's our second repeat. Let's do our third single crochet, sharp decrease. One, 
two, three. Okay. And this should bring you down from 18 stitches to 12 stitches. So at the end of this round, you should have 12 stitches around. So you'll crochet, sharp decrease. Here's our last one, a single crochet, then a sharp decrease. Okay. There we go. I'm going to pull this loop out, and then we're just going to take a second here. First, let's pull out all of our stitch markers, because we don't need them anymore. We're on our last round. And we're going to be stuffing our guy a little bit and sewing on the tail. And that can be a little bit tricky. It's less that it's tricky and more just annoying. Sewing on pieces of amigurumi, in my opinion, is always the most annoying part, which is why we made the feet the way we made them. I tried to do a tail very similarly, but I couldn't get it far enough out the way I wanted it. Okay, now what I'm going to do to make sewing on this tail just a little bit easier is we're going to single crochet into the next stitch, and we're going to undo that after. So I'm just going to single crochet into the next stitch and pull that loop out. And the reason is we're going to need that stitch for sewing on the tail, and it makes it just a little bit easier to work our tail in there. So the first thing we're going to do is we're going to take our th extra threads of yarn, including our stitch marker there, we're just going to go ahead and stuff it in our guy. And we could take some extra stuffing and we'll just stuff that into our guy as well. Now we can grab our tail and start sewing it on. There should be two ends of your tail. You want to take the yarn from the inside end and thread that on a needle. We want to choose a stitch on the back that is right in the center, so like right there. And I'm going to go straight into the center of that stitch. So not into this side or that side, but right in the center of it. Just pull that through. And that's going to keep our tail where we want it to be. Now we want to thread our other end, our other tail end of our tail, tail end of our tail. <laughs> and we're going to just start sewing it around. Now I like to start right here, which is the last stitch from the last round where our decrease is and then start going up like that. Now we're going to go into the next stitch on the tail, which is going to be right here. I like to go under both those loops and into the stitch that you just came out of and then out of the next stitch up on your body. We'll go ahead and pull that tight. Okay. This is the same stitch we just worked into. So next we're gonna work into the next stitch on the tail right here, into the same stitch you just came out of right there, and into the, out of the next stitch on the body. So let's, let's go ahead and count our stitches now. You can kind of see the uh, inner workings of my mind. Let's grab this so that we can count stitches here. On our tail we have one, two, three, four, five, six more stitches to work into, and the sixth stitch is going to be in the same one as we started with, which is right here. So if we count back six stitches that, and match where with our needle, where our needle is into right now, it should be the six stitches that we should work into to make sure that the tail is right. So we got one, two, let's go up three, four, five, six. Well, one, two, three, four, five. Okay, so we need to go down one more. Okay, so we're gonna go across three stitches Let's start with that. Okay. Next stitch over, into the next stitch on the tail, same stitch on the body, out through the next stitch on the body, in through the next stitch on the tail, same stitch on the body, out through the next stitch down on the body. Before we continue, let's stuff this tail just a little bit with some stuffing. You don't need very much, just like, just a little bit, just to make sure it keeps its shape. It doesn't deflate. That's important. Let's see, is that, yeah, that's, that's actually a pretty good amount of stuffing. Yeah, okay. 
keep going. Next stitch on the tail, same stitch on the body, next stitch down on the body. Okay, next stitch on the tail, same stitch on the body, next stitch over on the body. Next stitch on the tail, same stitch on the body, and this is the first stitch that we worked into on the body. And then finally, the last stitch on the tail right here, and into the same stitch that you just came out of. There we go. And we're just going to double knot the two ends together on the inside. Oops, messed that up. Let's try that again. Okay, one and two. There we go. And then we can just cut that end. And we're going to go ahead and just stuff our character up with those extra ends and with our extra stuffing. And you want to stuff him a little bit right now. You don't want to overstuff him. Uh, you def Especially if you're using um, this acrylic yarn, you definitely don't want to overstuff him. That's something that I found. Um, if you stuff them too much, it will the stuffing will start to show through on a larger yarn like this. So try not to do that. Try not to stuff them too much. Okay. But also you don't want to understuff, you know. There's a nice medium. Okay, so to finish up our piece, we're going to undo this first single crochet that we made that we needed to make there. So we're gonna undo that single crochet and get our stitch, or our hook back into that last loop right there. And we're going to continue on the body with our final round, round 16. And for round 16, we're just going to decrease into each stitch around. So we're gonna start right here, pull a loop through, go into the next stitch right here, pull a second loop through, pull that second loop through the two on the hook. Okay, and we're just gonna do that six times. There's one, and two, Almost done. Three. Four. Okay, five. And our last stitch right here. One and two. And that will be our sixth stitch. There we go. Now we can cut the yarn. You want just enough to sew it closed. Pull that through, and now we want to stuff him just a little bit more so that he is evenly stuffed throughout the body. I like using the back end of my crochet hook. If you don't have a rubber crochet hook like this to grip the stuffing, uh, try a um, an eraser, a pencil with the back of an eraser. That will uh, that will help you out with the stuffing. And we'll go ahead and see how this is. We could do a little bit more than that. I want them to be dense, but I don't want to see the stuffing through the stitches. Okay, and if you're worried about him falling over like that, we can stuff him with a nickel. Um, I don't actually have a nickel close to me, but that's, some, that's a little trick that I like to use a lot, is to stuff him with a nickel right at the end. So if you're worried about him falling over, um, stuff him with a nickel. You can also just bend the tail up and that should help him stand up also. Okay, so we're just gonna go ahead and sew this closed. For sewing it closed, we're just gonna thread our end of our needle with this yarn. And we're gonna go into, um, I'm gonna count three stitches up. Here's our first stitch right here. This is the stitch that we last worked into. I call that stitch zero. And after that, we go one, two, three, go in through the top of three and out through our zero. And then you want to go down through four. So if that was three, next one over right here is going to be four. And out through our one right there. We're going to pull that tight once you are into that stitch. And then you want to go down through five, which is the next stitch over from four right here. And out through two, which is the next stitch over from one right there. Once you are into that one, you can pull that tight. Finally, just pull that one through. And finally, 
we'll go ahead and go through six. Now it's hard to tell where it is, but if you just follow that line of that uh, five to, to one or five to two, um, you go over one stitch over right here, and that's gonna be your six stitch. And you can come out somewhere on the body. We can go ahead and pull that tight, pull that tight. Go back down through the same stitch you just came out of and anywhere on the bottom to create a little knot. Pull it nice and tight. And then you can cut the yarn nice and close like that. And there we go. We have a little T-Rex. I hope you like that pattern. If you do, please let me know in the comments below um, and like and subscribe down below. Also check out my other dinosaur patterns at clubcrochet.com slash, oh, slash dino. Uh, here's a cute little brontosaurus pattern. Here's a stegosaurus. We have, uh, you might have seen our triceratops. And let's see, um... I guess that's all of them. I have a raptor, but... Oh, and here's here's the upgraded uh, uh, version of the T-Rex with the spikes and the color changes. I have these special color changes on the belly to add a belly. So if you've successfully made this one, I would suggest trying out the color change one. I think this one is a really cool pattern. Also, it's definitely more difficult, but I think it's pretty cool. All right. Well, thanks again for watching. Pasta la pizza, happy hooking, and thank you so much for uh, making this pattern with me. Okay, well, pasta la pizza. Bye. Bye. Ha.